everyone, and welcome to another episode of One Light Night, the podcast that brings you stories of artists and people on their journeys, helping to guide, answer questions, and motivate you in the business. Now, it's been a while since I've had an episode, but today is one of the best, I guarantee you. I'm sitting here with videographer and author Lupe Family, and she has an incredible documentary. It's called Pat! Exclamation mark a revolutionary black molecule and we need to get down to business because this topic is something that we all want to speak about so please welcome lupe to the show lupe how you doing i feel happy and i feel so grateful we met at that harlem film festival absolutely thank you so much for joining me on this podcast listen i have questions the first question is who is lupe Lupe is a woman who took a pen name of family. So I miss family because everybody could be their own family. And I learned that from the woman Pat that's in this video. Look. You really have to understand the society you live in. And you really have to think it through and look at it fully as it is. Pat. 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 Education is now stupidity. Mm -hmm. which is why nobody wants to go to school because it's totally antithetical to real life. Mm. Pat, Pat, do we want to own ourselves? In honor of Pat. Pat, Pat. She was one of the radical women in the political arena who changed the complexion of black and Latina political culture and black radicalism by expanding boundaries. Taught me about energy. Helped us. She saved our lives. She saved my life. Teacher, student, writer, mother thinker, activist. It was the most important thing was Robin to understand the power she had. Ooh. Families, economic base, the ruling class is the opportunities. Right. Technology, the future, it can be done. Great history, the human being. Mm. That's the kind of spiritual power there's no way you can defeat. There's no way any motherfucker is gonna take me off mm -hmm. if I decide, and I'm not important, I'm just one little small molecule. A black revolutionary molecule. In other words, we are in a patriarchal capitalist system. And she always said, listen, you can take on what you want to own yourself. And so for me as an artist, I was writing, I was doing a lot of poetry, plays, and I said, now why should I just keep hanging on to daddy's name? You know, I can create my own name like Bell Hooks. So creating your name was, was part of the journey to make you who you are. Creating my name was, a, yes, yes, exactly. I like that, I like that. So where did, where did, where did you In begin? Fact, What's your... I put, I, I... Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I began in this country, but I left this country for some time and I got to see the world from outside of the U.S. borders. And the reason why I bring that up for black people, I think we tend to forget that, you know, we were enslaved and taken as subjects and human cargo to many places that don't speak English. So therefore, we can build um, links. That's another thing that this woman in this video talks about. We're molecules and we can go molecule here, molecule there. Let's unite, let's make combustion. And that's why I find it's important if people can get to Cuba or someplace outside of this territory, it would be very, very helpful. So you feel like education and knowledge of history is what sort of makes you and it widens mm. your perspective of life. Yeah, I'm so glad you brought up history. I'm mm -hmm. also say history because of Say it again. Say and, it again. Um, Pat was in this. Say that Black again. Was Lupe. Oh, oh, you know them. Her story. Her uh, story. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's right. Her story. You said it. Her story. Her story. His story. Yeah. These are stories of people's past. Um, of course, we have people that stood up in the time period of the civil rights movement but they went to Highland, a research center in Tennessee, like Rosa Parks. They just don't become activists sitting there in a bus. You consciously study something, even if it's you just ask your parents for their work history. 
oh, my father's mother was a concubine. You know, mm, yeah. that is a work history. She was right. a sex slave for this damn idiot in Jamaica. So it's always good to know what you come from with uh, your art or your uh, work or your fashion history, you know, her history, whatever it is, it's good to know what I'm standing on. Absolutely. You got that right. So let's talk about, uh, let's talk about the person the documentary is about, Pat, Patricia Murphy Robinson. Who was she? Okay, I want to slip something in here. So she comes from a Southern background. She is born in 1926, so that's definite segregation. And so I slipped her into my book. And I put her in as a character named Pam. Is it okay if I just say one thing about Absolutely. Pam? Absolutely. Let's let's tell me. Okay. All right. So Pam is in New Rochelle, and she's taking a lot of people from the six train to where she lives, and she has a lot of problems with some of these clients and these people because um, they're very afraid of going deep into the family of um, origin. So in Westchester county it says here the folks agreed to make the subway ride and she usually starts at 9 30 a.m though some days she starts earlier like on saturdays at eight o'clock in the morning she's always available late into the evening sometimes until 9 30 p.m though most often she ends her work day at nine she only takes breaks for lunch and dinner work out at the y she was a great swimmer and then she spends time with hubby who teaches at the nearby high school. Shortening his commute was one reason. She had finally agreed to leave her inner city social work and move out here. And she knew it was a matter of time before her politics got her fired again. Mm. Now she's talking to the woman. Uh, the woman is named Tanya. And Tanya's always at sixes and sevens. And that means like she's confused because she's scared of standing up to patriarchy and capitalism you know she has a lot of confusion in her head and racism is always around so pam talks to tanya and she says look i, I got some cab drivers i have to see some truckers some bar workers some bus workers and they're gonna go out to their shift so i'll fit you in at this time so her home feels like a push cart and she says to people who want to just adjust to the system no call somebody else because I want to demystify the delusions. I want to say we have illusions and I want you to look and see that there is a way that you can stand up to your own oppression. So I could go on, but that's a big part of the film. Mm. May I make the connection? Absolutely, let's talk about the film. Let's get into the meat and potatoes. <laughs> and also, the, don't forget the veggie burger. That's right. Okay. <laughs> Tell so, us about the film. What do, what do you want us to know about the film? Oh, oh, thank you, sir. I see. Yeah. So, you know, um, she would be very upset if I kept saying this film is about her. This film is about being a molecule that's willing to connect with other molecules. Because at the end, she says that I'm not important. I'm just one little small molecule. But when you move all those molecules together into a movement, you have a fire. You have a thunderstorm. You have Mother Ocean. You have yes. the sky. Yes. You see. Yes. So Absolutely. the film is about saying, people, are you ready to own yourself in an economic system where everything is owned, including you? How do you transform that way of thinking inside? Inside, you know. And she gives some examples. And her daughter is on the. Uh, trailer she's sitting there eating food because she knows she's gonna have to hear a lot of stuff from the mother and she was also behind the camera as the camera operator because remember this takes place the original part in the 1990s with those vhs those big heavy you know cameras and she is given a chance to tell a little bit of her story and it's in school when she's a little kid and she's done a report on Cuba and the teacher's white and, you know, very unsure of herself. And she doesn't want any kids talking about a system that doesn't have to do with capitalism. That's what I call it. Where you get, <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. where you get to be dominated and forced to submit for economic purposes at all times. 
So it, I don't want to ruin the movie, but that's one thing that happens. You see how Pat and her daughter's name is Robin and Robin have a conversation and I'm, you know, working with them and I'm not always clear. So they, they lay me out, they say, no, we were so surprised. I was a nine year old child and my mother was able to analyze how these white people think as teachers, they should dominate the kid at all time. And the mother, Pat, was able to say exactly the crap that the teacher would say to put the, the child down, not just, oh, my teacher put me down. She said, she would say something like, you don't know anything. You know, she had the same language that these teachers have been conditioned to use when they're terrified that the child can actually think. Right, gotcha. The one thing I do like, first of all, let's let's give, can you give us just a brief overview of what the movie is without giving away too much okay. of it? So, okay. So, you know, we want, I want to entice everybody because I love this film and it's very informative. And it also makes you think about the history of this country. It, it's a perspective that everybody needs to take a look at and listen and let it sink in. Because okay, so that that's yeah. good, Marcus, right there. What, what Marcus just told you all is, do you know where you live? I don't mean do you live in Harlem on 115th Street. Do you know what created the wealth here? Who made all these railroads? Who made all those streets? And whose land underneath is this? You see, because once you know, this is a big part of the film, once you know where you live and how it became wealthy on whose backs and whose things were stolen from them, then you have a different perspective on yourself because you can start to say to yourself then, if we made the wealth, then the wealthy are the thieves. Yes. I'm going to say that again. Yes. If we, the people, worked and worked and worked, stolen so labor, Listen, this is this is what I love about the film is because and I don't want to give away too much either, because what we're fighting for right now is what Pat has been saying all along. She has she was like the hidden gem that you have just uncovered. You know what I mean? Like in documented. Yes, it was a hidden film. gem. And I, I would say that she knew Malcolm X and therefore Dr. John Henry Clark. Uh, if you don't know who he is, look him up, please. Mm -hmm. And use DuckDuckGo because Google does attract you. So Dr. John Henry Clark gave a lot of people, Shirley Graham Du Bois, that was um, Mr. Du Bois' wife, blah, 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 a lot of place where they could speak. And it's called Malcolm X, The Man and His Times. Because on our website for you know supporting the film, www.pmrbio dot wordpress.com that's bio he says pat will you please write something about malcolm and the way she wrote about him in that anthology is from the point of view of he's my brother mm. so it's called malcolm makes my brother our son mm. you see what a yeah. human perspective this is a human being who is every one of our brother right. he's some of us sons he's from another time period after 1926 but still don't put him way up here he's just like you and me but he took choices he had the courage he stood to himself and said i've been almost cremated because his father was murdered etc you you read his uh biography by uh, manny marabo now i i suggest that not just the one that's you know the regular and you'll see that uh, his his daughters have come out with some real creative ways of looking at the world and his perspective Pat supported. So here we go, Lupe. So now there's a whole generation of people, two, maybe three even, where, you know, and I, I'm not saying, I personally am not saying anything against capitalism because you use it, you know, to your advantage or it's a disadvantage. You know, that's what this country is built on. However, I do think that there are certain needs that people in this country should have, that should be covered. The system here has been designed by design for certain people. The rich. Right. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the rich is, yeah. The, that's, especially that's the white rich. It. Yeah, well, there you go. You just hit the nail on the head. I mean, that's Pat. <laughs> that's that's Pat. I'm, right. I'm, that's in the film. She'll talk like that. May I curse on here, my love? Yeah, go. Go for it. Okay. So at one point she says, let's look at the Vietnam War. Now, some of y'all, what's that? I don't know. Just look at Afghanistan. Look at any of them. They're all about selling war 
weapons. War weapons. They're not about, oh, we got to save those people with this problem, that problem. And so then she explains how could the people who are the little dumb, you know, they had all kinds of terrible names, just like for us, the N word, for the G word for the Vietnamese and right. Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And so she says, listen, underneath the ground, underneath the ground in Vietnam, there were long tunnels all over the country. And they were built by the North Vietnamese warriors and the women and the men would live under there. And guess what they did? They would knock those planes down from the US soldiers who don't have a center. She talks about that, no spiritual center. And then they would take those materials into the tunnels, make them into bullets and be working like it's a factory underneath the ground and then defeat the people who have no center inside themselves. They don't know why they're there. And that's why I wanted to say the M F word. She said, that motherfuckers never could have thought of something like that. Right. The intelligence. Right. And the spirit, she says, and that spirit. kind of spiritual power, you can never defeat. Right. You might try to think that you're going to control me, but the spirit is very strong and it's going to one day wake up and defeat your ass. Absolutely. Come back and bite you right in the ASS. <laughs> <laughs> And she had a sense of humor that I tried to put that in there. Oh, and one other thing, because we heard at the Harlem Film Festival about access. So for the deaf, it is signed, meaning with words at the top. It is in English, but they can read everything that is being said. I just decided to do that. I think Spirit told me to do that. And so now I realize, wow, so you don't have to hear because it's in words at the top of the screen. And there's some poems in, and writings, uh, and there's other people, not just uh, the three that I already mentioned, uh, Esperanza Martel, you know, Blanca. Uh, these are people from the um, Latin Women's Collective, uh, singers, there's all kinds of people that just stood up and people that were every day. And there's one very poignant part, I think, where we talk about death and what does death really mean? So I encourage you to at least go there to the trailer, y'all, and check that out. And then after you want, you know, to pay a little three dollars, you can go on. <laughs> you no, know, those capitalists, they got to get their take. That's right. And I encourage everybody to please go to Harlem filmfestival.org and I believe it's on watch.eventive.org is where you're actually going to see the live stream or buy the film. This is an incredible film. And, and Facebook, film. And, and Facebook, Facebook, Marcus, because one thing, if you just go to the website, you might start pulling your hair out. Go, oh, if you have here, please go to Facebook because on the, even you don't have to have Facebook, but you just go to Home Film Festival on Facebook and it'll give you the link right there. Right. It's not in alphabetical order. Take your time, people, especially New Yorkers. We're very impatient. Take your time. I myself missed it. And oh, I want to say it's connected, Marcus. It's connected with another film by a Latina woman. I mean, she's one of the major characters. It's not by her. And her name is Mariposa. And she is from Ella uh, del, uh, del Bronce. He, what she's doing is so similar to what Pat used to say. Let's look at the history because Pat in the book uh, where she's Pam, she's telling the character of uh, Tanya and Agua about this woman. Her name is Lolita Lebron. Lolita Lebron was in Congress in 1954. You can look it up, but you can also see the movie that's in the package. So when you rent that little $3 of Pat, a revolutionary black molecule, you get the other movie right with it. And I recommend that you see that movie too, so you could understand, again, history, history, and consciousness of how we can have connection. Because it used to be, still sometimes today, Blacks and Latinos, you know, or Latinx people, we were so separated by language and then by, look, at least those people don't do this, or at least those people don't do that. That crap, it keeps us from looking at the real enemy and saying, who owns this housing complex and the one in Staten Island and the one in Connecticut and the one in Jersey and still doesn't give heat. So we right. just fight with our neighbors instead of focus on the one who is controlling us all. Absolutely. Instead of unifying and fighting together, the unity is what's going to make us win. We and that's the, that's the molecule again. Just so you know, she doesn't repeat it over and over, but you know, her demeanor is sort of like this sometimes. She's very low key, 
But what she's doing there is she's saying, wherever you are, you need to be able to analyze. You see, like now I just shifted my voice down because I have to remember, some people cannot take it when you're too expressive. They really need it slow down. And then they can focus and hear the words because they're not all involved with how I'm presenting. So she was a master at that. There's one woman in the film that is talking about the unity or the disunity that we have to fight through and create conscious conflict resolution yes. about the women's movement. And this black woman is with dreadlock. She's sitting there and she's talking about how she was looking at Pat in this meeting and Pat is five foot something, she's very short. And she said, oh, this little old lady, I gotta take care of her. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> and so then the woman says, uh, I was about to leave. I was so tired of those white people. And she got up and Pat came over to her and said, don't leave. And she said, I just sat back down in my chair and I realized I have to fight it out here. I can't just keep disappearing. I have to hold my own. Here. Yes. And another woman said that about law school. It's very interesting how the particular stories of each person that I sort of had a representation. Also, there's a guy in there that he talks about. Let me just finish that one mm -hmm. sentence. So I had a representation of people from different parts of the Pat world. You know, I couldn't get everybody, but we were in Harlem. We were right there by the Jamel Mansion. It was like right on 162nd. And we were talking in a remembrance. She would not have liked it if we had said, oh, we're having a memorial for, just remember the history, her history of this person and how we all interrelate. And so the man, he, he's a crack up. He says, hey, y'all, he, he's at the sort of remembrance down in Jacksonville in the South, because that's where she ended up dying in hospice at home. Thank you, Robin. I want to tribute to you, Robin. Robin was the daughter and the son who, you know, bathed her and took care of her as she was going into the other world. So anyway, this guy, he's standing at the back porch to talk with all of us at the uh, remembrance there. And he takes out a, an imaginary pad and she, he goes, listen, those conversations with Pat were so heavy. I had to get a, this is before the internet, before cell phone draw. I had to get a pad and a pen before I started the call so I could go, time for a Pat call. I'm gonna have to take notes. <laughs> Cause she was, she has so much information, so much valuable information. That's another thing. I don't wanna like, I'd be amiss if I didn't talk about this. So <laughs> a lot of this filming and footage was taken in the early nineties. What on earth made you, made them record these, you know, speeches, these these talks? Because back then there was no YouTube. There was, you know, you barely had a camera. You know, that was pre, like internet that, was just that getting was started. Lupe. I, I was listening to a cable TV teacher. Okay, I will repeat. She was from Iowa. She was from Iowa, Cedar Rapids. It's a small little town, people. Mm -hmm. She was working class white woman. And she told me and my boyfriend at the time, are y'all going to do good in this class? I'm like, oh my God, I hate technological things. He did very good. But she said, now you've graduated from this class. Why don't you get a video camera? I'm like, oh my God, what would I do with a video camera? I'm, you know, jewelry, let's dress, let's do a little dance. She said, because you got to keep documenting what's happening in the world, you see? And so then I get this camera uh, because I had saved up a little money. I think it was like $200 a time. And I'm going to visit her. I'm just going to visit. Now, I didn't ever like those little Polaroids always taking the Kodak and this and that. So I said, you know what? I'm going to grab this thing and carry this on the plane. And when I got off, I said to myself, now I didn't carry that heavy thing, that heaviest thing, just to say, oh i left it in the room you know right. so her her daughter is very feisty she used to drive a bus like me and so i said to robin i said robin uh do you have something i don't know how come she had that tripod maybe we have to ask her but uh we we have by the way we have seasonal uh tonight is may the 9th so we'll have something and then may 12th then we'll have another one in the summer and then we'll have one in the fall and one in the winter and that's on the pmrbio.wordpress.com because we're trying to get you all to be the molecules that you are to wake up and say we have had young people come in there and say i have no idea of how to document things and just to make the tie-in i say to them i didn't either 
I did not know that you need to take pictures yes. and voice of somebody that's one day going to be gone and dead. But I had at least a love of history from childhood, you know, because I found that, can you believe it, Negro history, that's what we were called, mm -hmm. would relieve me of feeling so ugly and I'm not Shirley Temple and I'm never going to make it to be white and with her curls and blah, blah, blah. And Amen. that history <clears throat> made me say, I've got to document this woman. So what I want to just end with is, you know what's funny? I didn't plan those questions. I just said, you know, she's going to be sitting up here talking. I know she'll talk. So if she's willing to give me that conversation because she was very humble she liked to keep in the background i'm gonna just say can you break it down can you break it down because i knew when i first talked with her i thought this woman is talking so fast she wasn't talking physically fast but the thoughts the were making thoughts in so her head yeah i can see that too many the, connections right too, so many and that's what right. was so powerful about it and kudos to you for having the camera and capturing this valuable you know piece of history and time like this is this is so valuable and so poignant for right now. Oh so. yes, because right now we are suffering. I would like to say, people, you will enjoy the fact that you may feel that you're alone. You may feel there's no connection because there's so much like just digital this and that. You're not really face to face with people anymore. But what had helped me, and I'm I'm sure thousands of people, because people in the countries of you know France and England they there's one guy Bill Bowles he couldn't make it to come back to the US but he has a website billbowles.info williambowles.info and he keeps the website of that PMR bio.wordpress.com he's the one who's keeping it and he's way in England so you're not alone it's that you don't know that you're really connected from deep roots again like Marcus has been saying in me too of history, history, history and history. Yes. We don't know that. And you we, know, so, you are the catalyst that's uncovering some of this history. And it's and, important. And the family, and talk the family. to your families, yep. ask them, what did grandmama do? And take the shame out of it. Oh, she clean houses. So what? Right. Do you realize we saw, those? We, we saw a documentary at the film festival where the young lady said, "I my, my grandmother lived to be a hundred something years old. And she, I talk to her every day, so I don't need to read the history of what happened. I had it in my house and I asked her questions. And she answered. And she answered. But sometimes the shame of what the capitalist system has said, which is you never gonna make a change in class. We right. pretend that you can always be just what you wanna be. Right. What a lie. Half of us never even make it to a top of the working class, okay? Right. Especially if you live in a non-unionized state, which she lived in at the end in Florida. But by the way, the reason why she went from Baltimore, Maryland, then she lived in the West Coast. You'll see a couple of pictures. She's in bathing suits. I'm like, my God, it's because those people in California, they, they got a lot of beaches around there and they have better weather. And then she came to like the New York area, you know, city area. Mm -hmm. And then she moved back to Jacksonville, Florida because her son was a trucker. She did want to be around him, but also she wanted to see where masses of black people still hold it down, y'all. Wow. Still hold down that cultural recognition of the land. And we know how to work the land. Do you know that people came, you know, the Western colonizers and went to Sierra Leone because they were expert rice people, meaning people who knew how to cultivate, you know, rice just doesn't That's right, Lupe, school the right now, school them, let them it know. It is not out of a box, it <laughs> comes out of the land. And Absolutely. in South Carolina, there's a lot of rice and Geechee people who know how to plant that rice so it doesn't ruin. You cannot always get a good harvest. You're if it doesn't right. go good with the weather and the way you put it, you're gonna lose money. So she wanted to go back. And I love that she died in the house. She died in the house that the family together built, they, they sort of came up with the idea of how they would put the tall ceiling and then 
here they would have she had a lot of art in the house from all over from the people in Cuba from the people in uh, South Africa from Pedro Pietri who was a Puerto Rican a activist poet I'll say one thing about him he used to go in a poetry reading and he have in his back pocket and this is going to be very important now if we let this Supreme Court just take over our bodies and he would have all these condoms when he finished his poem he throw the condoms into the audience <laughs> say okay everybody don't forget to have a good time with protection absolutely listen uh, Lupe one more question for you and then we, we got to run out of here okay is Pat here today oh wow I, I don't want to move the computer, but she's right up there, meaning she's in a little photo uh, there, but I will reveal something else. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when Malcolm X died, for Pat, it was a very harsh moment. She was in the auditorium with her husband when he was murdered. And she went home and her daughter told me this. She just stayed outside. She, she didn't really want to be in the house with everybody. She needed to be with the spirit world. So what I'm trying to connect here, and I think I'm doing okay, is that Pat lives in each one of us. And there are spiritual traditions from West Africa uh, where you talk to your ancestors. Mm -hmm. So if you ever feel a little lonely, just go inside, you know, maybe take a shower, whatever, and just light a candle and then say, who is with me? So of course Pat is with me. Of course she's saying, remember molecules, connect with the ne next one, because through those connections, this is how Cuba took a little country of Cuba, took the US, which was mafiosa, which was domino sugar, which was dominating all those people, especially the Afro-Cubans. You gotta look at Glor Gloria Rolando's film on Asada Shakur, Eyes of the Rainbow. And they got rid of the, the US of A. Can you imagine Absolutely. that? Absolutely, yeah. Believe it, it's Absolutely. possible. You need to have discipline. <clears throat> and she did say, we need to study. So if you don't want to study books, read films, read them. What I mean is take your little notes while you're watching the film and then right. have some conversation with at least one or two people. Absolutely. Just like Marcus is doing with me. You got that right. And I encourage everybody to please see this film at the Harlem Film Festival. You can see it virtually right now. It's called Pat Exclamation Point, Revolutionary Black Molecule. This is Lupe Family. How, do, how can we get in touch with you? We need to, oh, yes. we need to reach okay. you. Okay, so if you wanna see this film, because the film festival is only till May 15th, 2022, you can please go to www.p for Pat, m for Murphy, r for Robinson, bio bio dot wordpress dot com but also i don't want to give this email out like just forever ever but if you're serious people not a bunch of questions we want to show it at your school we want to show it at your function your church your women's group your men's you know alpha phi alpha whatever it is please get in touch with this and this is a different email pat p-a-t the t-h-e video 86 because she was 86 when she died at the video 86 at gmail.com and there is a woman i love her to death we'll, we'll talk that story the next time robin spencer r-o-b-y-n robin spencer dr robin spencer works at lehman and she's doing a biography first she was going to call it uh sister of the revolution and she's working with the title but she has at you know for instagram mm -hmm. at Pat archives, which is a reason why we do charge for the film or donations when we do show. We're going to show it in Queens at this place called Centro because we need to keep those archives together until we can get them hopefully to the Schomburg. Or do you have a library you want us to put them in? Because we don't want it to be in some, oh, you have to have 10 IDs, can't get in, the guard said, blah, blah, blah. No, we want it in a library or a place where you can go in and see, you know, she had these little pearl necklaces and the black, you know, tops and stuff, because she knew how to work the system also, how to be in a place and just be like, she's observing. That's right. That was a very big strategic tactic that she taught a couple of people in, in life around me. You have to listen and learn. And watch. Yes. And Keep watch. this out. That's right. 
So that's that's the information. It'll all be in the bio in the bottom of the podcast. So please make sure you support this film. Once again, it's called Pat Exclamation Point, A Revolutionary Black Molecule. This is Lupe Family with her book, To Face It. She's also an author. Please hold that up for us. And videographer. And what about you, Marcus? Can I interview one question? Uh, you want to ask? Let's go yeah, on your I podcast and talk about you. <laughs> Yeah, how do we support your podcast? How do you support my podcast? You can support the podcast by going to anchor.fm backslash one mic night and show some love there. You guys all know me. Please go down, make a comment at the bottom of the episode. Give us a couple of likes and definitely share this podcast episode. Support the movie Harlem Film Festival.org is where you can see it. I'm Marco Luis. Thank Facebook, you for joining Facebook. us. Facebook also. <laughs> you know, because it gets confusing on that other side. That's right. Thank you guys for all joining me for this episode. I'm Marco Luis. I'm out. <laughs>